All right, we're gonna start a new project on the 56 Chevy. We're gonna put in a Holley HyperSpark ignition system to complement the Sniper EFI. So we got the uh, new distributor came in and I opted for the optional CD box because I was told the coil driver, which works with a traditional coil is not reliable so this was a couple hundred extra dollars and i got the uh, recommended sniper coil so the <clears throat> challenge is going to be finding a place to mount the coil and the cd box it's obvious this is going to replace the distributor that's on the intake manifold so let's go take a look under the hood all right for the coil studied this for a while already. I think when I mount it up here on the firewall, uh, you know, ideally it's near the distributor. And uh, I think I'll mount this guy like right here. And it's easily, I, I, can, I can drill holes through here and get to it underneath the dash very easily. More of a challenge is where I'm gonna put this CD box Huh, actually it could go under the dash. It could go here where the battery used to go. The battery's under the bed now. The problem on this car with that is on the other side of this, I've got a aftermarket heater box, which would have to come off so I can get to the, where these screw holes would go. That means draining the cooling line. It's not out of the question. Could also put it on this inner fender. I guess that won't look too bad. Uh, all right, let me go look under the dash, see if that's an option. All right, we got the coil mounted on the firewall four six millimeter screws holding it on nice and strong <clears throat> as far as the cd box i think we're going to put it on the firewall right here and they tell you not to mount it upside down of course it doesn't say this side up but i don't think they want this end up because they don't want moisture gravity fed so i'll mount it upside down or <laughs> this side up whatever and uh i'll drill four holes and get that thing mounted i didn't want to put it on the inside because then you got to get the wire and harness through somewhere and you need a inch hole through the firewall and i just didn't want to do that uh, there's really no good place under the dash to mount it anyway. But it'll tuck in right there nicely. All right, I'm less than an hour into this project and I've already got the coil mounted, the CD box mounted. Um, I guess the next step is to drop the distributor in, run the wires from uh, the CD box, two go to the battery, two go here. And then uh, a couple go to the sniper, to the points terminal and the switched power. And uh, wow. And then uh, update the uh, ECU. All right, on to the next step. Since I installed the sniper about a year ago, I don't want to lose the tune. I'm not going to follow the standard instructions of running through the wizard, which will wipe out my EFI tune. So I'm going to open my uh, latest config file, which I saved on my laptop. And tell it that I have a HyperSpark. So we go to system and ignition and change it from a coil 
which was my HEI GM distributor to the HyperSpark. And then we'll go to Spark and set the uh, idle at 15 that's about right uh, the cruise 36 and the wide open throttle 32 those are pretty close I did check my time in before I started and those are pretty close so I'll keep those um, I want to go to 2D so I can adjust this. And if you look at the graph, it's pretty rough. I mean, this is not what a typical timing curve looks like. And I understand this one gives problems for people. So what they tell you to do, one recommendation, and this is the first time I'm trying it, is to smooth it several times. So I'm going to do that once twice, three times, four times. Let's, let's give that a go. That's what the table looks like. And uh, I think that's good. Um, cranking parameters. Rev limiters. 20,000. Oh, let's just put it at 5,500 for now. And uh, I think that'll get me going. So let's save this config file as uh, 10 HyperSpark. And uh, I will upload that with the little SD card and give it a go. All right, we have to make sure we have the latest firmware on both the ECU and the handheld. So let's check the ECU first. We go to file. We go to ECU HWFW, hardware firmware. And it's 1.1.26. The minimum is 1.1.1. So we're good there. So we go back. We go to local setup. Local info. And this firmware on the handheld is 1.1.35. The minimum is 1.1.7. So we're good on the firmware. All right, with the coil and ignition box installed, uh, next thing I'm going to do is put this thing on top dead center of the compression stroke, and it should be pointing to the number one plug. So let me go ahead and, and do that. My uh, marks are down here. Since my number one spark plug is behind the header, I can't get a regular socket on it. So I made this custom uh, 5 8 socket. Let me bring it up here. And um, it's a short socket, half inch drive, and I ground down four sides on it to fit a 13 16 open end wrench. So I can get this on the spark plug, get an open end wrench in there and back that spark plug out. I'm sure they sell something for this, but I had this on hand and it just works really well for me. So let me get that number one spark plug out. I want to verify top dead center on the compression stroke. To precisely uh, know that I'm on top dead center, I've got this uh, bore scope. Down, and that's the uh, top of the piston right there. See me going down the spark plug hole. And uh, as I was turning the crank, I was watching the piston come up and then start go back down again. 
So I know my top dead center mark is accurate. So now I'll pull the distributor cap. And again, the rotor should be pointing to number one. And before I pull the cap, I'm gonna mark all the wires to the cylinder number because the firing order is 18436572. Spins clockwise. So uh, I'm gonna have to remove the wires and put them on the new cap. I don't wanna mess that up. Okay, one more trip around the block. The uh, rotor is pointing 180 degrees off of number one, so I am not on the compression stroke. One more time around with the crank. All right, we've got the old distributor out. And while it's out, I think I'm gonna wire everything in case I need access. Here's the old distributor and the old cap. Here's the new wire and harness. And uh, this end of the wire and harness goes to the CD box that's mounted on the firewall. And the other ends of this cable, the red and black go to the battery. This guy with the brown and orange go plug right into the coil. This guy goes uh, to the switched ignition, the uh, red wire. The white wire goes to the points output on the Holly Sniper, which means I have to plug this old harness that came in with the Sniper. And the only wire I'm gonna be using is the white one. I hope I can find somewhere to tuck these other wires. I hate to cut them off in case I ever need to control a fan or an air conditioner or something in the future. But uh, we'll figure that out. And then the uh, distributor has a little cable right here that plugs into the distributor itself. The pink wire goes to the same switched ignition source and the purple and green go to the wire, another wire and harness that comes out of the sniper. And it's uh, labeled crank signal position. Crank signal positive and, and crank signal ground. Um, so that'll just plug in right there. So let me run all these cables before we drop the uh, new distributor in. In high anticipation of this all working, I'm splicing these wires shorter. Then I'll uh, cover my splices with this heat shrink tubing. And that way I don't have a lot of extra cable around the engine compartment. All right, wiring's all done in place. So it's a matter of dropping the distributor in. And they want you to lube this gear up. They supply the grease, which was nice. Put the gasket on and uh, we'll phase this thing. Uh, show you how to do that. All right, I got the distributor dropped in and it's flush right here, which means it's down into the oil pump properly. I had to play with it a little bit to get it there. Now we do what they call phasing the distributor and it's a simple matter of putting this cap on. It fits right over the rotor. And then you just rotate the distributor till it fits this cap. And that's right about there. Everything's nice and snug. Snug on the rotor and it's snug down here on the distributor. And then you bolt it down. And then you mark with a pen where your number one cylinder is. So when you put the cap on, you know how to put the wires on. So let's do all that. All right, everything's wired. The coil wire on, the spark plug wires on. Batteries hooked back up. Now we've got to load our new configuration file. settings and load my uh, 10 hyperspark 
upload to CPU. Okay. All right, then we have to turn it off for it to take effect. But first, I want to find... Hmm. Let me turn it off. I think we're ready to go. All right. Now, we... well, that's not good. It's a couple of days after the HyperSpark installation and the car wouldn't run. After it ran for five seconds, it died. Uh, the handheld lost uh, contact with the ECU, I didn't notice. And uh, the engine flooded because when the ECU is down, the fuel pump continues to pump. And I actually pulled some spark plugs and gas was pouring out when I removed the spark plugs. Had to change the oil, change the spark plugs. Uh, and it turned out to be an RF or EFI electronic interference problem because uh, <clears throat> I put all this shielding on the wires that exit the uh, main body. And... Uh, that fixed the problem. I, I also um, cut all the extra wires off of this eight connector. Only one wire I have is the uh, one that goes to the distributor. All the rest of them I don't need. This brown one is the tack wire. I might need that in the future, so I kept that. But all those little wires were antennas, I guess, for electronic interference. Uh, the one that goes down to the O2 sensor, uh, it does go by a bunch of high tension wires. That could have been the problem. I did all of these fixes at the same time. Afterwards, the engine started right up and, and, and ran fine. I, I checked the time in with static 15 degrees and I had static 15 degrees, so it was installed properly. Um, so another job done. Holly HyperSpark with uh, a few problems. Uh, I, I don't know why I didn't have RF problems before the HyperSpark. Maybe the HyperSpark puts out so much more power that it started interfering with some of the other wires. Anyway, uh, look forward to comments and thanks for watching.